Hello, my name is Lena Vanstete. I am presenting the paper Corrugated Cardboard Shell, a pavilion project of an architectural workshop. The corrugated cardboard pavilion is a result of a two-stage architectural workshop. The shell is 3 meters in height, spanning up to 6 meters, and is supported at 5 points. The pavilion was built from 3 mm corrugated cardboard sheets. It consists of 391 sets of planar quadrilateral elements, 1,537 unique pieces in total. The structure was assembled without using heavy scaffolding or any adhesives. The connection method originates from a simple cross-halving technique widely used from children's toys to furniture and architecture. The workshop teaching agenda strongly relied on historical examples of form finding, introducing students with pioneering works of Antoni Gaudi, Fray Otto, Sergio Musmeci. A specific emphasis was given to the works of Heinz Isler. His proposed hanging cloth reverse model was the most illustrative of the digital form finding used in this project. During the workshops, the most important teaching agenda was to help students acquire an understanding of the workflow strategies and the relationship between a desired architectural form and its realization. The aspects of digital tools, material, fabrication and the act of construction are prominent design constituents and should inform initial architectural intentions. For this project we had two main design constraints which were the available corrugated cardboard material and laser cutter fabrication. As for the digital tools, we used the Rhinoceros 3D platform together with Grasshopper. The physics engine Kangaroo was used for digital form finding. We've also used polygonal mesh processing tools and GAN and OpenNest tools for orienting and labeling the elements for fabrication and construction. The first step in the design stage was to create two-dimensional outlines and generate planar topology patterns within these outlines. Various methods for generating topology patterns were explored, but for the pavilion structure, the planar surface represented by the boundary curves was divided into a set of topologically simple patches, and each patch was subdivided using a quad pattern. The second step was finding the form by simulating gravity force along the z-axis. Here the selection of points for supports plays a major role in shaping the output geometry. The input topology pattern directly affects the obtainable shape as well because the method applied for digital form finding computes line networks with assigned geometry goals. The next step was directly related to the sheet material and the laser cutter fabrication, so we had to use planar elements, and here for the panels we applied the projection method. And finally, the last step was the design of the diagonal elements, connecting neighboring panels. So this was the initial design workflow, and in the first phase workshops, students were divided into groups to explore various mesh topologies in the realm of form-found double-curved shapes. Physical models were built as two-layer systems from 2 mm cardboard. Each student group also had to create a customized base and supports to suit the shape aesthetically and structurally. These prototypes served as an important teaching tool and provided crucial technical insights for the creation of the pavilion. In preparation for student workshops, preliminary tests were made using a single-layer cardboard structure with hexagonal panels. In the case of hexagonal panels, hexagonal mesh faces are created as grouped triangular faces. The inner tessellation of a polygonal mesh face is not displayed and the group is taken as a single entity, a single polygonal mesh face, represented by the Rhino Common Mesh Engon class and the plane of the polygonal mesh is found by computing the average vertex coordinates and the mean of the triangular face normals. So we get the planar hexagonal panels by projecting polygonal mesh faces onto their average planes. To create diagonal connections, joints and indices for fabrication and assembly, we're going to continue using the connectivity graph from the initial non-projected mesh. After inspecting a single layer test model, a second layer was introduced to obtain greater stiffness, adding resistance to twisting. 
A two-layer system was created by offsetting polygonal mesh using its vertex normals. Several physical tests were made to determine the right distance between the two layers, taking material properties and sheath thickness into account. For the pavilion structure, the distance of 9 cm was selected. The modeling of diagonal connecting elements was based on mesh face adjacency. The essential aspect of the design was finding proper orientation. Connections perpendicular to mesh edges performed best in transferring the loads, but posed a greater risk of damaging the pieces during the construction. Therefore, it was crucial to define the assembly sequence and insertion direction accordingly. So the assembly sequence can be specified manually by drawing a path, this was done for the pavilion structure, and the insertion direction is solved by finding one approximate vector per one set of panels, inserting both layers with the same panel ID at the same time. For the smaller scale prototypes, we have also tested the use of graph methods, and this is something that would be interesting to investigate further in the future. The proportions and exact dimensions for the diagonal elements were found through physical testing. A decision to shorten the connecting part outside the structure was made to identify the orientation of the element during the assembly. For the pavilion structure, the width of the interior parts of the connecting elements is up to 20 cm and the total height is 15 cm. There are some variations in the design and application of the diagonal connections the larger outer arches were stiffened with double connections and longer interior parts. Some other local areas of the structure strengthened with longer elements. And of course, the supports were reinforced with doubling longer connections and the added third panel. A traditional cross-housing joint used in this manner results in an angular cut through the material thickness. This is due to the inherent geometrical properties of a double curved surface. But in this project, because of the two main constraints, the thin sheet cardboard and the simple laser cutter, an approximation for a two-dimensional cut was needed. To exploit the potential of friction within the joint, the offset tolerances for depth and width for the cuts had to be defined through thorough physical trials. The critical aspect of such testing was the precise material burn parameter using specific laser cutter settings, and it had to be checked and adjusted before each cutting segment. The aim was to ensure fast and precise insertion while providing enough friction to stabilize the structure during the assembly. In the initial prototyping phase, panels were grouped into a few clusters to ease fabrication, sorting and assembly processes, affording the division of work among the students. The clusters were assembled in parallel and later joined with multiple elements at once. For the pavilion structure, grouping strategies were utilized to group the panels only with their associated connecting elements. These small sets, consisting of few items, were created to speed up sorting processes when preparing for fabrication. Because of the considerably larger sizes, very few elements could be nested on a single sheet. This increased nesting and fabrication time exponentially, but the time lost was compensated by reducing time spent for sorting and packing the pieces afterward. The directionality of material corrugation strongly affects panel performance under stress in different directions. After physical testing, the decision was made to mix corrugation among the panels, ensuring that the same set of panels have varying orientations for the inner and outer layers. Single corrugation direction, the best performing in compression, was chosen for the diagonal connecting elements. Due to a large number of unique but very similar pieces, labeling was necessary for the assembly. The enumeration, following the assembly sequence, was engraved at the center of the panel. Each panel also had to have the identification for the inner or outer layer and numbers, naming the neighboring panels with regards to each edge. The diagonal connection element had a label marking the neighboring panels that it connects. For aesthetic purposes, the engravings were hidden inside the structure between the two layers. These clusters, 391 sets in total, were sorted and packed for safe preservation and quick access. 
Thorough labeling provided all the necessary information for the assembly within the pieces themselves, ensuring swift and precise on-site construction. As I've mentioned before, the assembly sequence corresponded to the panel enumeration order and consequently the insertion direction. The base and the supports were custom designed and fabricated using a 3-axis CNC milling machine from 18mm MDF bolts. First, the base and the supports were put in place. Then, following the sequential labeling order, the five stiffened boundary arches were assembled to convey the loads to the supports. The balance of the structure was secured using temporary supporting posts, but no need for heavy scaffolding arose. This was the benefit of the resistance to tension provided by the friction within the joint. While maintaining the assembly sequence and building on each boundary arch, the pavilion was assembled from several clusters merging to one path towards the final pieces. The process was rapid, the structure was built by a dozen students in less than 12 hours, and it was an indoor exposition at an art exhibition to showcase the studio teaching. The presented study strongly relied on extensive physical prototyping and testing fabrication tolerances. Thus, it could be highly beneficial to employ computational optimization strategies taking into account the assembly sequence, insertion vectors, and the distribution of loads. Another prominent aspect worth investigating further could be an off-site construction pre-assembling larger clusters. Such intentions might also require redesigning the joints. And of course, exploring materials and spaces would be very exciting too. In terms of teaching, one of the key takeaways would be the importance of relating to real tangible examples when introducing digital tools. In this instance, we related to historical architectural examples of form finding. Another crucial aspect is extensive physical prototyping to acquire the understanding of the main differences between digital and physical models. And finally, although the prototyping phase was very much enjoyed by the students, building a larger structure, a pavilion, proved to be a better lesson, solidifying the importance of structural thinking in the preliminary design phase. We are grateful to the Vilnius Academy of Arts Department of Architecture for hosting the workshops and to all the students who participated. Thank you for your attention.